All right, what is going on, everyone, and welcome back to episode six of Can I Solo? Today, we are going to be continuing on with more dungeons. And last time where we left off, I believe in episode five, we finished up a fungal one or fungal two, banished two in arcs. And I actually am not sure if Blackheart is soloable simply because the final boss turns you into skeleton and the uh, timer for that is just too long. Like, I don't know if you can survive that. So, or at least last time I did that, it was not soloable. But anyway, today we're going to be trying out Elden 2, Blessed Crucible. And for the DLC, I was kind of looking through the list a little bit earlier. And I I think there's a few stopping points in all of them that you can't do solo, which kind of sucks. But today, what I wanted to try was... Um, I think you can do shipwrights. Shipwrights. I think that one yeah, that shouldn't really have any hard stopping points. It's going to be a little bit tricky, but I think we could do it. But anyway, with that said, let's start off with the non-DLCs and go in from there. So we got Elden 2. Also, for all of you asking, no, my companion's not even leveled up max. My companion's not really even geared, so they're just kind of there. I'm just trying to level it up, so it's not so much helpful they they taunt every now and then but they're mostly dead so it is what it is all right let me see what are the endeavors i just logged in about like 10 minutes ago so if there's anything defeat 40 enemies inscribed abilities i don't have any for this character unlocked kill a beast use an emote Apple Intimidation. Eat Intimidate. What the heck? <laughs> I don't think... Have I ever seen that one? That's one way to eat an apple. Very cool. Alright, let's do this. Held in two. But yeah, in case you guys have never seen this video before, basically seven years ago, I decided to do this series. And obviously the meta has changed and everything over the years. So I wanted to see what I could do now compared to years ago. And I also have a, for the most part, caught up series of Can I Duo with one of my friends. And we do everything on vet and possibly hard mode. So if you want to check that out, there's a link in the description to that. It's pretty interesting how people have to change up their play style and you just do things differently than you would normally with two people versus four. Um, you usually build more utility and self-healing versus, you know, if you have a full group and you have a healer and a full dedicated tank, usually a lot easier. But yeah, you learn a lot about the game by trying things, playing like non-normally, I guess. And I think that's kind of fun. So yeah, that's one of the things I've been doing. Why is that still alive? Hold on. But yeah, hopefully you guys are enjoying the series so far. And the goal is to complete as many as I can solo. But some dungeons literally have a mechanic stopping point, not like skill check on me. So, yeah. Probably a smarter idea if I kill all the ads so I stop getting bursted down. But we're good. Oh, they're still following me. Alright. So yeah, first boss, very straightforward. If you've ever fought like one of those uh, crematorial guards or any equivalent named, same thing. Oh. 
So this boss is a unique one if you've never done it before. So bosses summon two beetles, a blue and a green one. And when you kill it, um, it's you stand on it and it basically gives you a lot of resources. So <clears throat> if you look at this one, we're going to kill the blue one. And if you stand on it, look how my magic basically doubled. That's the mechanic of this fight. You kill the ads and then you get double resources or the priority stat. And you basically do more damage. It's, it's kind of unique. So you could just jump down here. This is uh, Elden 2. And you that means you can like skip a boss down here. And then jump and kill the adways. But we're just going to clear it. Just for the sake of doing it. mini boss over here so the mechanics for this fight is it summons in a little like shadow that will tether you and i think it heals the boss but like this hasn't really been an issue ever since the boss came out so it's like oh wait hold on did that reset or just not do it but either way not a big deal kill the boss Bunch of ads come out of the portals and you just kill them. You mess with the swordsman, you'll get the point. Maybe putting a single target dot on for all this is not the smartest idea, but it's fine. <clears throat> so in Elden 2, you have to go through the portal. Elden 1, you don't. I think this boss is Merclight, and the mechanic for this one is it'll turn the screen black. And then that means you have to stand in the white portal to not take a heavy dot damage. But it's 2024. It's literally a non-issue. Back in the day, a lot of these stuff I learned when the dungeon released. It'll summon puddles on the ground. You don't want to stand in these yet. But when it changes the tiles and these turn white, that's when you do. That's it. Are you hurt? Very cool. Nowadays, if you do this in a full group, you just that mechanic doesn't even happen. So here, there's just a bunch of portals that spawn. There's more ads.
This is a long dungeon simply because it's a lot of waiting. For this boss, you just... A lot of things. This is the main one. Everything else is an ad. Very easy. I'm almost at 3,000 champion points. That's cool. 25 more to go. Ugh, it's like a million per point. So the mechanics for this fight is it'll summon white and black ads like shadow ghosts and the white ones will heal the boss and the black ones will like cc tether on you so it's like uh in theory you're supposed to kill them but and then of course the stomps will have a self heal on This is what it looks like. Don't stand in the fire. It's fire bad. <laughs> Bacara, is that you? Gargan, you live. Yes. Wow, nothing again. I heard you can get the owl feathers from these, but the drop rate is extremely low. Blessed Crucible. It's surprising how different you have to play <clears throat> when you're doing solo. I believe this dungeon has a lot of AoE, so probably gonna have to switch up a little thing. Like, this is good, but... Probably better to use some sort of, like, AoE... Um, Scalding would be okay. I should probably level that up at some point. Uh, orb might be decent. Fresh meat for the crucible, eh? Let's feed him to the Durzog. Good idea. Get him, boys. Nice. Two out of three endeavors done. What 
what is the third one? Uh, scribed abilities, thieves trove, and Cyrodiil. <laughs> we faced worse than you, monster. So the only thing you need to worry about is not getting eated off. This dungeon or this fight used to bug out back in the day because the enemies would have to jump, but one of them would always have been targetable from the top. So like it would be this one. I don't know if they fixed it, but it used to be targetable. Some fight in our challenges after all. Take them down. Congratulations, you've passed the first trial. Yeah, they bested the finest slavs, drunkards, and fools we had to offer. Adorable. Shall we give them a pendant? I say. Let's yep, see how still broken. Against a real Seven years later. It doesn't really matter which order you kill these in. It's back in the day when damage wasn't insane. I think I'm bleeding. Use this to defeat them. We don't abide cheaters in the blessed crucible. You're going to pay for that! Nice. What level is Bastion? I think he started at like level 4 or 5 when he started this thing. I just want him to, like, stay alive. A lot of this part is skippable as well. There's a chest over there, by the way. I don't need any loot here. Here we like to do the YOLO pull.
Holy, that's a long timer. Now for the true test. I've tamed the most exotic and dangerous beasts from the dark corners of Tamriel to test these challengers. The first monstrosities presented for your entertainment come from the ashlands of Morrowind. These creatures laid waste <laughs> to an entire village before I captured them. Downtime. Without further ado, it is my great honor to present a magically crafted strain of shock. I call them Incineration Beetles! Back in the day, if you got bursted by that, it would actually just... 100 to 0 you real fast. A lot of downtime in this fight. <laughs> Feather? Feather now? No feather? Dude, that achievement is... Ugh. Where is it? Um, Holiday events, witches festival. Like, I have all these done. Except I need to ten feathers that are stupid to get. I hope by the end of this event, <laughs> they just increase the rate. I'd rather not have to buy them. Come and take us. Fan out. Light it up. Burn. So the flame matros. They basically healed the enemy and put a, I guess, more or less a shield on them. So you have to take them out. It's uh, showing you what's going to happen in the upcoming boss. So this one on hard mode kind of gets new players because it does this AOE fire burst around her. 
And it actually does a lot of damage on hard mode, though. It's like, it's not difficult. It's just people like this thing right here. Does a bit of damage into tether. Make sure to get those. Otherwise, the fight itself is very easy once you learn patterns and everything. Dungeon 2 down. Let's go. All right. So for the DLC today, what are we doing? Um, we did Ice Reach last time. I'm not sure if we could do Unhallowed. Not because it's hard. It's just there's one fight where you have to go up and to the top. And I'm not sure if it resets if like no one's at the bottom. So, one thing I wanted to try was Shipwright. This one is actually a really fun one. I would consider it a really, like, high up on there, like, top 10 favorites. I'm trying to think, are there any... Any stopping points? I don't think so. She is fine shortly. Casca will be back any moment. Beware, salty spirit. Such will not go easy. Oh. You're no ghost. Such will be broken. Um, I'm also probably gonna skip the sides as well. It's a little bit more of a challenge if I don't get all the perma buffs. So if you were to do the sides, the first one is uh, in that house. So this shows you that in the upcoming boss, there's going to be ghosts flying around. And essentially what they do is make it so you don't heal as much when you're tethered with the ghost. So you have to kill them. And there's a lot of other, you know, dumb things we got to worry about too. But I don't know. I might have to be more defensive with this fight or this dungeon in general. Because there's a lot of things that just hit hard. But like, I don't think it would be a problem. I also do know the mechanics fairly well. So it's going to do a straight line. You don't stand in that one. It, this fight is a very coordinated one on hard mode. So it's going to summon adds and then there's one ghost per person. Paralyzing feeler, you just don't get hit or you dodge roll through it, interrupt, and then back on the boss. Give them everything you've got. But we should probably just kill it. You can roll straight through it, it's not a big deal, the paralyzing fear. If someone misses it on hard mode, it's generally a wipe. Trust me when I say I have a lot of practice with that one. So here's what you do. You sidestep it or roll through it. If it doesn't even hit you, very cool. So we got first abomination phase. Usually in a full group, your healer will be on the left straight line healing. 
Um, obviously, you have a pretty heavy dot on you at all times. So you want to kill the Abomination or Colossus as fast as possible. And uh, then you go back. There another Inferno caster soon. Abomination number two. Easy. So far, we're doing great. Well done. Bastion. Sheath your weapons. The battle is won. Mini boss. I'm getting my ass kicked. This one I think I might need a another defensive layer and maybe some more damage or like damage and shield would always be nice. So basically, the fight for this one is if there's a puddle on the ground, you avoid it. If the boss is standing in the puddle, then they go invincible for a little bit. Um, it's going to do a kindred spirit, and that means you have to kill the dog on every cardinal direction. Otherwise, it does a burst. Normal, it doesn't really do anything, but on vet and hard mode, if you don't clear it, it's just a wipe. then obviously wasps will CC you. The way we do it and the higher difficulties is you do north and south because you see how it does a cone and then like if you clear it on one side then you don't have to actually do the rest. You see how there's a safe spot? 
the cone would be going up and down as well. Um, so. On uh, veteran and hard mode is four kindred spirits. It's actually kind of bad to have a companion because they don't know how to move it out of the circles here. So if you have a companion with a taunt, you just want to, you really want to be the one kiting it. Don't do what I'm doing. Just cut it like in like in clockwise around the edges. So that one makes it so the DPS don't have too much of an issue. But yeah, that's really it. This is the entire fight. It's just more of a DPS check on the higher difficulty. And uh, don't get hit. I just like funneling them in together. So this will actually confuse people like if you're doing this. So there's going to be a boat over here. Behind here is where the mini boss is for the third one. This third side area. We're going to skip it, but in case people were wondering where it is, that's where it is. See, actually, hold on. My sticker book. Shipwright. Okay, I'm done with sticker book here. We're good. You need to keep moving. Time for the old soaking shock. No remorse. Sometimes there's a chest over here. Today there is one as well. You've got a knack for stumbling across those things. I think I want more of a shield this time around. Like 
There's a few mechanics for this fight. There's going to be... The one you don't stand in, that's bad. And then there's going to be one where you just keep moving. I don't remember the names of it. I'd, I'll tell you when I see it. Bout is your move one. So puts a few uh, things on you. And it's harder with more people because you have to kind of coordinate where you're going. And then there's going to be ads on the side. There's an achievement for getting hit by like five of the waves. I'm going to have to control all the ads myself, which is kind of annoying. Plus the Hulk and then the boss. The Hulk will usually pick one person and charge them. Um, but in this case, it's always going to be me, so... Oh, it chose my companion. This is a very coordinated fight, by the way. It doesn't look that bad, but sometimes it could be. I am the crashing waves. That will one-shot you on higher difficulties if it charges you in AoEs, so just don't get hit. Nope. That was a risky res for someone who's about to get clapped again. So the tides actually do clean the green puddles off the ground, so sometimes it's a little bit RNG whether it happens and then there's a lot of movement. Execute range, Did it easy? We are 
Do we get rewarded? No, of course not. Ah, though. All right. Well, that has been all three dungeons for today. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Next time, what we're going to do is... Um, oh, City of Ash 2 is a long one. So we, I don't know how we'll do that. City of Ash... Dire Frost is not doable because you have to do two levers and we only have one. So we might do City of Ash, Crypt of Hearts, and then... Um, Moongrave might be doable. Marcelok... I have no idea. Marcelok is just a long one. Uh, I think I'll split those, because City of Ash 2 is a long one. So is Marcelok. So I want to do them in, like, separate videos. Um, Stone Garden. I'm trying to think. I don't think there are any hard stoppers in Stone Garden. It's just kind of annoying. Castle Thorn might be a lot of heavy incoming damage. I think a lot of these are, might be doable. Uh, Coral might be scuffed. We're working on the trifecta here with my other group. So, yeah, that's been going on for a while. We got ship right down, earthen root. I think earthen root is doable. It's just kind of a long one. Raven deep. Yeah, I don't know. We'll figure it out next time. But with that said, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching episode six. And I'll see you next time. Peace.